Hi friends, how is everyone this morning? As you can see, I'm here on a beautiful uh, sunny day at uh, the Desert Memorial Park in Cathedral City, California. It's uh, about uh, 10 miles or so from uh, downtown Palm Springs. In fact, if you take this road, this is Ramon Road, and you take it all the way to the end, you'll end up in uh, downtown Palm Springs. I'm back today to visit a few of the uh, famous grave sites that I missed on my last visit. When most people come to Desert Memorial Park, they usually come to visit Frank Sinatra's grave, which you see there on the right-hand side in the small section just as soon as you enter through the front gates. And then sometimes people will make it all the way to the back of the cemetery to visit Sonny Bono's grave. But other than that, I think uh, most people don't realize that there are dozens and dozens of very famous people buried here in the cemetery. Today I'm heading back to visit the final resting place of actress Betty Hutton. Her gravesite happens to be very nearby a handful of other very famous people, so I'll show you those uh, gravesites as well. Her gravesite is just up ahead a little bit on the right hand side, right before you start to make the curve to the right. Betty Hutton's grave was another one that took me forever to find. I've been coming here for years and I've looked for her gravesite for years. I, at least, you know, half a dozen times I've looked, I thought everywhere, and I've looked in this section many times, and I just overlooked it. Fortunately, today I was able to find it, and now I can share it with all of you. If you're not familiar with Betty Hutton, she was a stage, film, and TV actress, comedian, dancer, and singer who got her big break in 1942 in her first film, The Fleet's Inn. She co-starred with Dorothy L'Amour, who was at the time the number one female box office star. In 1944, Hutton starred in The Miracle of Morgan's Creek, and that movie made her a full-fledged star. And by 1945, she had replaced Dorothy L'Amour as the number one female box office attraction. In 1947, her song, I Wish I Didn't Love You So, was nominated for an Academy Award. And by the late 1950s, she had her own TV show. Sadly, in the 1960s, after dealing with divorce, depression, addiction, bankruptcy, and the death of her mother, her stardom and popularity began to fade. During her career, she appeared in more than a dozen stage productions. She had more than 25 hit songs, and she appeared in more than 25 popular movies, not to mention her many television appearances. Now, just a short distance from Hutton's grave is the final resting place of composer Earl Hagen. Earl is known for his many TV themes that include Make Room for Daddy, the Dick Van Dyke Show, Gomer Pyle, I Spy, That Girl, The Mod Squad, and many others. He also composed the very popular Harlem Nocturne, which has been used in many TV shows and, and I believe movies as well. Just a few grave sites away from Earl Hagen's is the final resting place of Marion Marsh, who was an A-list leading lady in many popular movies of the 1930s. She's especially remembered for her role in the movie Sven Nagali, in which she co-starred with John Barrymore. 
1936, she appeared in the classic The Man Who Lived Twice. And as, a, as an interesting bit of trivia, she married Cliff Henderson, who would go on in 1940 to found the town of Palm Desert, California. Not far from Marion Marsh's final resting place is the gravesite of actor, singer, songwriter, entertainer, entrepreneur, and the former mayor of Palm Springs, the city of Palm Springs, Sonny Bono. His grave is just a short distance to the east of Marion Marsh's final resting place. Last but not least is actor Chris Alcade. He is probably best remembered today for his many roles playing TV cowboys on numerous popular TV westerns. From the 1950s through the 1960s, he had roles and was a regular in some of TV's best loved television westerns, including roles in Maverick, Gunsmoke, Rawhide, Laramie, Have Gun Will Travel, Death Valley Days, Bonanza, The Big Valley, and a regular recurring role on The Rifleman. As an interesting bit of trivia, in 1948 he was married to Georgia Sarkeesian, who is the mother of Cher, which means he was Cher's stepdad for a time. The fact that al and Cher's former husband, Sonny Bono, are buried just a couple of rows from each other, makes me wonder, is this just another one of those weird coincidences that I keep discovering in cemeteries? Or were they friends in real life and buried near each other on purpose, which I've noticed is very common in cemeteries as well? What do you think? If you visit the cemetery in person, just outside of the uh, office doors to the right, you'll find the restrooms and you'll also find a map of the cemetery that lists many of the uh, famous people buried here. You might want to pick up one of the maps before you start your exploring. So I'm happy to see that they do still have the uh, uh, celebrity maps to the uh, famous grave sites here in this uh, cemetery and uh, I'll have to check and see if it's been updated because uh, there's quite a few I mean they they have the major you know the the A-list uh, celebrities but there are still well mostly the actors and actresses I think and maybe singers but there are still quite a few other famous people that are almost equally as famous but maybe they were behind the scenes like composers and uh, sports figures and um, so unfortunately, if you come on the weekend, the, uh, the restrooms are not open, and I'm here on the weekend, and um, so if you need to use the restroom, I mean, there's lots of shops nearby, so it's, it's not out in the middle of nowhere or anything. So if you enjoyed uh, visiting the famous uh, final resting places here at uh, Desert Memorial Park with me today, please give a thumbs up to this video, share it with a friend, and leave a comment down in the comment section below. So as always, thanks for joining me today, and I'll hope to see you next time. Now for those of you who are interested, I'm going to continue my drive through the cemetery. It's just one large loop with one street that goes right through the center. So as you can see, it's a very flat cemetery, and so it's a great place to walk if you're looking for a, uh, a level surface. Now, as I'm driving back to the front gate, there are quite a number of other celebrities and famous people buried in these sections to the right and to the left, and I'll be back in the future to visit those grave sites as well. I just prefer to do shorter individual visits to the famous final resting places, our favorite people. But every now and then, like today, when there are four other people that are just within a few grave sites away from the person, the main person that I was here to visit, then I'll, uh, I'm happy to visit them all at the same time. Now that's the side gate 
which is right off of Duval Drive. I try to walk at least a mile or two miles every day, unless I'm visiting a cemetery, and then it turns out to be five or ten miles, usually just trying to find everybody. This is one of my favorite cemeteries to walk in when I'm just looking for a, a, a less strenuous, you know, easier walk. But when I'm feeling especially ambitious, then I go to Rose Hills or one of the uh, cemeteries that has very steep inclines. Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills and Forest Lawn Glendale. Both have lots of hills if you're looking for a real, a serious workout. So how about all of you? Do you like uh, walking in cemeteries like I do? Well, here we are back at the front gate. And for those of you who stayed with me for the whole trip, thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.